Greetings everyone. Just to avoid any confusion, it's an effect. You know, to make it look like an old beat up film print, kind of like the kinds of film prints that you see in these sets we're talking about. Yeah, I can turn it on and I can turn it off. It's intentional. Just a bit of fun. You know, that that's it. My camera's not dying. It's fine. Don't worry. So, yeah. So let's go back and do the review, shall we? So, now that we got that out of the way, what are we going to talk about today? Well, last time we talked about the uh, Mill Creek Spaghetti Westerns collections and... In post-production, I gave you a look at a few other notable Spaghetti Westerns collections floating around out there that you might want to grab for the Spaghetti Westerns library. Now, the Spaghetti Western era ran from the late 60s to the late 70s. Now, there's a lot of other films outside of that time span that can sort of be classified as Spaghetti Westerns, but that was the time span for the Spaghetti Western genre proper. Now, prior to that, there was another genre which was quite popular. It actually started in 1958 with the Steve Reeves film of Hercules. Hercules was a huge hit, so the Italian cinematic world wasted no time cashing in on its success, and over the course of the next roughly five or six years, cranked out dozens upon dozens of Hercules-type films. Now, many of these featured Hercules-type characters, or Hercules himself, you know, or other notable, famous, strongman characters, or ones they just made up for the movie series, whatever. And others featured just sort of generic gladiator characters, because gladiator movies and movies about ancient Rome and things like that were also quite popular during this period. There was a lot of notable stuff coming out of Hollywood at the time. So essentially what we ended up with was what has become affectionately known as the sword and sandal genre. Now, we still see movies that clearly fall into the sword and sandal category, but these, like the Spaghetti Westerns, are notable in that they were basically low, low-budget movies, just kind of cranked out one after the other to cash in on the success of other bigger-budget movies being released at the time. As I mentioned when I originally did the uh, DVD update video where I first showed these sets, the genre was also known as peplum, and if you want the definition of peplum, well, go watch the other video. Ha ha! Sneakily making you watch two videos. Oh, I'm so devious. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, you probably already know. And that's why you're here, because you want to know all about Warriors, the 50 movie pack from Mill Creek. And that's what we're going to talk about today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Okay, so this is basically just going to be a pretty straightforward overview. Now, unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to add much in the post-production area here. <laughs> because unlike the spaghetti western genre, there aren't that many collections of sword and sandal films out there. At least not ones that have sufficient amounts of different stuff to really make it worth your while. I think there's a couple, I don't know, I'll poke around a bit when I'm doing the editing on this, and if I find any, I'll put up screens there and titles down there to describe what they are. In the meantime, let's get a look at Warriors. Let's get a nice big look at the cover. See, this, this, is, this is how much I love you guys. I give you nice, beautiful cover scans like this. If you're wondering why I do my videos in 720p when I only have a 480i camera, that's why. Because that looks so much better in 720p than it would in 480p. Don't you agree? Okay, so let's flip over to the back cover. There we go. And we'll take a look at what's on the set here. Glasses off because I'm nearsighted. Alrighty, so here we have over 74 hours of colossal action. I've watched a good chunk of these. I've watched maybe about uh, 10 or so of them. I mean, needless to say, it's a huge time commitment to go through 50 movies. But, uh, you know, I kind of want to savor them. You know, I mean, the, the peplum genre really didn't last that long. Now, that said, there are a lot of movies in that genre. There's probably about 100 movies total in the genre. 
but if you're looking to get your sandaled feet wet in the genre, this is definitely a good set to start with. So let's see what we've got here. In alphabetical order, Alibaba and the Seven Saracens, Atlas in the Land of the Cyclops, The Avenger, Caesar the Conqueror, Cleopatra's Daughter, Colossus and the Amazon Queen, Colossus and the Headhunters, The Conqueror of the Orient, Damon and Pythias, David and Goliath, which, by the way, co-stars Orson Welles. I think I actually saw that one when I was a kid. And yes, it is based on the classic biblical story of David and Goliath. Duel of Champions. Fire Monsters Against the Son of Hercules. Fury of Achilles. Fury of Hercules. What a angry muscle men around, aren't they? The Giant of Marathon. Giants of Rome. The Giants of Thessaly. A lot of giants roaming around, too. Gladiators of Rome. See, there's a typical sort of gladiator story there. Goliath and the Dragon. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm going to talk about Goliath and the Dragon after we're done here, because that one was just a hoot, and you absolutely have to see that movie. Goliath and the Sins of Babylon. And here we get into all the Hercules ones. Check this out. Hercules against the Barbarians. Hercules against the Mongols. Hercules against the Moon Men. Hercules and the Captive Women. Hercules and the Masked Rider. Hercules and the Princess of Troy. Hercules and the Tyrants of Babylon. And what is actually one of the only one of those that is actually a Hercules movie. Some of them are, but a lot of them are actually other strongman characters that they just made the title of the movie Hercules to cash in, whereas it's actually about a different a Hercules type of character. So the only actual true Hercules sequel we have here, Hercules Unchained from 1959 with Steve Reeves. That is the actual sequel to the 1958 Hercules that basically spawned this whole freaking genre. Okay, then we have Hero of Rome, Herod the Great, Kindar the Invulnerable, The Last of the Vikings, Machiste in King Solomon's Mines, yeah, that's the only Machiste movie that actually has Machiste in the title on here. A lot of these so-called Hercules ones are actually Machiste. And I say Machiste, but throughout the Machiste movies, it's actually pronounced Machiste or Machiste, depending which one you're watching. Machiste was probably the closest character to Hercules in terms of uh, popularity, I guess. He was a very popular uh, hero in, I guess, Italian folklore and whatnot, and uh, for American audiences, his movies were mostly retitled to Hercules, even though he still goes by the name of Machiste in the movies themselves, just because they felt that Hercules was a more marketable name, because Machiste is pretty much unknown over here, unless you're a fan of this genre, of course. Uh, mole Men Against the Son of Hercules. I wonder if that's the same Mole Men that Superman once fought. Hmm. Queen of the Amazons, Romulus and the Sabines. Samson and the Seven Miracles of the World, Son of Hercules, the Land of Darkness, Son of Samson, a lot of descendants of famous strongmen here, Spartacus and the Ten Gladiators, the Ten Gladiators. By the way, the Ten Gladiators is actually uh, a trilogy, and on this set they have the first two. There's the Ten Gladiators, Spartacus and the Ten Gladiators, and the third one I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's this one. <laughs> and I think you can find it in some other sets. Thor and the Amazon Women. Triumph of the Son of Hercules. Two Gladiators. I don't think that's any relation to the Ten Gladiators, just two other Gladiators. Ulysses against the Son of Hercules. Ursus in the Land of Fire. Ursus in the Valley of the Lions. Vengeance of Ursus. Vulcan, son of Jupiter, and finally, the White Warrior. Oh, it's a lot to go through all these, these movies. Um, so I was going to talk a little bit about Goliath and the Dragon. Now, if Machiste is the closest to Hercules in terms of, I guess, popularity, 
Goliath would probably be the closest to Hercules in terms of actual character. Now a lot of these other strongman characters really aren't demigods like Hercules or don't have anything to do with the gods. They're just strong guys. Uh, Makiste, for example. Makiste has really no origin story. Nobody really knows where he came from. The only thing we know is every so often, uh, usually near the beginning of some of the Makiste movies, he'll just say, I was born of the rock. Whatever the hell that means. <laughs> Does that mean he were chiseled out of the face of a mountain or something? Like, what What does born of the rock mean? But that's all we ever get. That's the closest we ever get to an origin story is he was born of the rock. And therefore is strong. Like a rock. Ursus is another fairly popular one that had a bunch of different movies. And uh, at least in the case of Ursus, we have something of an origin story. He was raised by lions. And he's not strong through any favor of the gods or any supernatural abilities. He's just strong through sheer force of will. He is like a naturally strong guy who is nigh on invulnerable. Well, maybe not invulnerable, but he's very strong, like all these other strongman type characters. But then we have Goliath. Now, Goliath is probably the closest to Hercules in terms of the, th the type of character that he is. Now, Goliath is originally a mortal man, but he kind of got into making some deals with the gods, and the gods gave him immortality and super strength. At the beginning of Goliath and the Dragon, which is actually a fun little movie, even if the effects definitely are not of Ray Harryhausen caliber, we see Goliath on a mission for the gods. And the main reason he's doing this mission is because he's been promised that he will be released from their control but still be able to keep his immortality and super strength for some reason. Yeah, I didn't quite follow that part. But anyway, if he does this mission, he'll be free and strong. But I say he's the most similar to Hercules in that Goliath actually has a deal with the gods, and the gods are involved in some way, right? Uh, whereas Hercules is the son of Zeus and a mortal woman, so he's like half a, half a god, basically, and that's where he gets his strength from. So it's about the closest you get with these Hercules wannabe characters. But the thing I really enjoyed about Goliath and the Dragon was, and one of the reasons I picked the, this set up was because I was hoping there'd be stuff like that in here, is there's a ton of monsters in it. And I just, I love the old Greek myth monsters, you know? You've got a three-headed dog that breathes fire. You've got, uh, like, a, a Batman. No, not Batman. You know what I mean. It's like a man. Well, we'll say a man bat. There. Well, no, because that's a comic book character too. Anyway, this bat creature man thing. It's not man thing. You know what I mean, okay? <laughs> anyway, so you got that. Uh, he's flying around attacking him, and of course you have a dragon. You have the dragon of the title, and the dragon lives in this cave where Mickey stays been off on this mission and there's this guy trying to take over the city or something and he's basically trying to kill Makiste with this dragon in the cave. Because Mc I keep saying Makiste. Goliath! So I'm getting my generic strongman Hercules wannabes mixed up. Goliath. So Goliath is in the cave. There's this dragon lurking around and this guy wants to take over the city. He's like, oh yeah, the dragon will kill, kill Goliath. No problem. Of course he doesn't, but, you know, he thinks he will. And uh, anyway, it's a lot of fun. But the thing that I love about it is, you know, you kind of go in half thinking maybe they'll at least try to do something Harryhausen-esque with the monsters. You know, we'll get some stop-motion animation. And yeah, in Goliath and the Dragon, you do get some stop-motion animation. Literally about 10, 15 seconds worth in the entire movie. And all that stop-motion animation shows is the dragon walking around the cave a little bit. So I guess there was just a few shots that they couldn't, that they wanted, but they couldn't really do any other way other than to do some stop-motion. And that 10 to 15 seconds of stop-motion animation is actually really good. I was really genuinely impressed by it. You know, it was a very solid 10 to 15 seconds. So what about the inevitable fight between Goliath and the dragon? You know, which is the whole reason you went to see this movie in the first place. That's what you've been waiting for. This better be epic, man. Well, when Goliath is fighting the dragon, essentially we have a massive puppet of the dragon head. It's like life-size. Life-size dragon head puppet thing on strings, which are mostly visible. And I guess, you know, a few guys opening and closing the mouth and swinging the head back and forth and, like, doing the fire... And the guy playing Goliath is just, you know, giving it his all. And 
swinging his sword at this big puppet head and like really into the the moment and just living it. But I mean, I swear this <laughs> this dragon head looks like something you'd see on one of those carnival rides. You know, where you're riding the little train through and then a dragon comes out. Rawr! That's what it looked like. It looked like something from like an old carnival ride that they decided to throw in this movie. In fact, most of the monsters in this movie look like things from old carnival rides. The three-headed dog that breathes fire is a puppet. And not even a really good puppet. It's like a puppet on strings. And the heads are just kind of like flopping around like... Argh! Argh! <laughs> and then breathing fire and just... Jets of flame shooting out all over the place. And man, I'd be scared shitless if I was the guy playing Goliath. You know, he's just standing there in a loincloth. And there's these this, this dog puppet shooting fire right for his crotch. Man. So yeah, anyway, Goliath and the Dragon. Definitely, that alone makes this set worth getting, I think. <laughs> now as for the rest of them. You know, the rest of them are pretty generic, entertaining uh, romps. Some evil guy is up to no good, so call on Hero X to save the day. And, uh, you know, there's, there's definitely some solid entertainment here if you do enjoy the sword and sandal genre, which I do. If you're expecting something of the caliber of Jason and the Argonauts or Spartacus, yeah, you're not going to find that here. But if you're just looking for some good, entertaining Saturday afternoon, 50 cent cinema style stuff, um, you know... There's a lot of fun here. And there are some really good ones in here, too. Like, I mean, obviously the Steve Reeves Hercules ones are worth checking out. And uh, some of the other ones are pretty good, too. There's Vulcan Son of Jupiter, which was which was a really good and proper one about the uh, the gods just being assholes to, to man and, and just doing their own thing. You got Venus, the goddess of love, just tramping it up like crazy in that. And, and it's just a blast of a movie. I really wish that that one existed in a better transfer because there don't seem to be any decent transfers of it out there. A lot of these other ones you can find better editions of, like, elsewhere in the world, but uh, for some reason Vulcan Son of Jupiter, which I think is one of the better movies on this set, uh, just does not seem to have a better um, transfer out there. Oh well, whatever. Lots of good fun on here. Warriors, definitely recommend it. Let's take a quick look inside. Much the same as the Spaghetti Western set, and there goes one of the discs. That's wonderful. So, again, just... This is a huge freaking stack of double-sided single-layer discs. Um, I don't know that they've really done much in the way of smaller sword and sandal sets. I think there was, there was one a while ago, which you've probably already seen a picture of. But, uh, so yeah, so again, you just put it in the clips, and then you push down the corners. Which is a little tricky with these 50 movie sets. I can only imagine what it must be like with the 100 movie sets that they have. Hopefully they use single-sided discs for those, so it's still the same number of discs. I don't think they do, though, so it's probably quite impressive. There we go. That's not going anywhere. Yay, I used correct grammar this time. Alrighty, so that's it for the Warriors set. Hope you like it. I'm certainly having a blast working my way through it, slowly but surely. And um, I hope to find more sword and sandal epics in the future to add to the collection. Alrighty, well that's it for me to you for now. So until next time, thanks for watching, and sayonara. So essentially, what we came up, of course it would look even better in 1080p, but we're not, of course it would look even better in 1080p, but yeah, I don't feel like rendering, I think I just shit myself. Damon and Pythias, the fury of a kill, yeah. for, uh... now Goliath, in Go yep now ursus ursus is another one that you know had a, a
Jones. And one of the reasons he's doing this mission is because he wants to be... I, so, he does the mission for them, and then, uh, my nose starts itching. And that's that. Mm. Mm.